there if you would only call upon him. Mm -hmm. God bless you. We getting ready to enter into our worship hour. We are coming to you this morning uh, with a song. And my wife and I, we ran through it. So we hope that we can get this song this morning. And uh, so we ask you to pray for us. Pray for us, pray for us. Yeah. 
Let us pray. Father God, we thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come. And, and as we come, Lord, we ask that you would just touch your dear servant. Lord, me down in the deep well of thy salvation. Touch my lips that I might boldly say those things that you have laid upon my heart in private. Now we reveal to your people now publicly. Lord, we thank you and we praise you. If there's anything like sin laying around about us now, cast away far it is from the east, it is to the west. Lord, we need you right now. Preach your Holy Spirit. We need you that we might be able to speak those things with authority yeah. right now. In the precious name of Jesus, we do pray. Let every heart say, Amen. 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 Living under control. We, you know, when we live in out of control, uh, we live in a society that that's what it does. It practices living out of control. And things so many times have been out of control so long in our life that we have gotten used to it. Uh, we look uh, for things to be out of control, and, and that's what we do. We got action plans built around things being out of control. And uh, uh, do I have any witnesses in the house this morning? Uh, uh, we carry insurance, don't you? Yeah. Uh, uh, you don't need insurance tell things is what? Out of control. <laughs> and, and we buy maintenance plans for our equipment and our mm -hmm. kitchen, but we don't use the maintenance plan until things get out of control, yeah. and, but we have a way of, of, of trying to get ready and prepare ourselves and look for things being out of control. Uh -huh. And uh, don't get me wrong, it's a good thing to uh, have an action plan for you to be ready when things get out of control, but the sad news is that we are prone to look for things yep. out of control to the yep. point that we very seldom look for things that are under control. Yep. We expect things. So when, 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 when you buy a car and buy insurance, you expect that thing to get out of control. So one day this thing going to fail and we uh -huh. need an action plan in yep. order for it to correct what has failed in our life. Yep. And the TV commercial said that while you're skidding on ice, the rule of, of, of is to steer in the direction that you are skidding. It makes sense in life, don't it? When you are skidding, going in the wrong direction, the only way that you can wreck yourself is steer in a different direction that you're skidding. But when you don't know where you're going, you don't know which direction you're going, you don't know what, how you're going to get there, how you're going to get out of this situation, a whole lot of time it don't make sense. When you're driving in a world that you don't know what you're doing and don't know how you got there, don't know where you're going and don't know how you're going to get out of your situation. See, somebody should know what I'm talking about this morning. <laughs> There's some situation that yeah. you got in your life. You didn't know where to turn and you didn't know how to get out of it. Mm -hmm. The wrong, see, you can get around the wrong people sometimes. And when you get around the wrong people, you don't know how to stir yourself out of the situation. We got folk been in relationships so long. I'm talking about abusive relationship. They don't know how to stir themselves out of this situation. How do they get out of an out of control situation when you don't know what to do? Huh? Amen. Huh, what do you do when you don't know what to do? Yeah. Huh, I, I don't know. The wrong gang, if you stir toward them, maybe they'll scatter away. But the tree or God will, I don't know about that. Mm -hmm. Trees and God will don't move, do you? Mm -hmm. Somebody may move if you try to get in that way, but certain things in life will not move just because you're coming. It ain't going to make no move because you're coming. And yet yeah, you yeah. want it to move out your way, but yeah. things in life don't move. You're the one that's going to have to make some adjustment. Mm -hmm. huh? See, my Bible tells me that that we... Uh, that, that we are henceforth be no more children tossed to and fro, carried away by every wind and doctrine by the slight of men, cunning craftiness whereby they lie wait uh, to deceive us. See, everything shouldn't affect us. Everything shouldn't bother us to the point where uh, we got to find no way out to get out of this situation. See, mm -hmm. see that, that, that everything shouldn't bother us to the point where we, we get confused or disillusioned and not knowing what to do. See, lives live by randomly responding and reacting to conditions around us without a plan. That's out of control, ain't it? If you're in a place in your life, you need to have some type of plan to get you out of your situation. To live under control, you must live under a plan that God has for your life to prosper, 
and have the design in that he have for your life. Old folk used to say running around like a chicken with the head cut off. Yeah. So isn't that some of us in our yeah. Christian walk, instead of us being founded on the solid rock of God, we running around in our faith like a chicken with the head cut off. Our lives are in such a mess. No order, no plan, out of control. Yeah. Running around again like a chicken with the head cut off. Yeah. So no head means what? When, when you're running around with a chicken with the head cut off, that means that you can't think, uh, you can't see, you can't hear, you, you can't talk, you can't smell, you can't taste, you can't even smile. You're, you're running around like a chicken with your head cut off means that no way that you can escape out of your situation. Amen. God created mankind in his image and in his likeness. But sin did, distorted that, that view of us. And, and until then, we are still living in a chaos that existed even before the world began. See, we are no more like the image and the likeness of our creator. But if we are running around in that state of confusion, yeah. God is about order. He is not about running around uh, without any order or any plan in your life. See, we are no more like that image, but in the likeness of our father, Adam. You know, people say we are created in the image and the likeness of God. Yeah, Adam and Eve was. But when it comes to me and you, we were created in the likeness in the image of our father, Adam. We are like Adam. I'll go to Genesis 5, 1 and 3. When God created man, he made them in his likeness. Uh, and then male and female, he created him and blessed them and named them man when they were created. When Adam lived 130 years old, read it for yourself, he fathered a son in his own likeness after his image. See, God created us and designed man to be in order under his control, yeah. but sin entered into the world yeah. and all the descendants of Adam are just like him. Oh, they, he, he, he's slipping and dipping and lying and sliding and, and hiding all the time. You know what he did when he got caught? He tried yeah. to slip. He tried to dip. He tried to lie. He tried to slide and he tried to hide. But you know this morning there ain't no hiding and no sliding and no dipping and, and no diving when it comes to God. See, we are no more born in the image and the likeness of God, but we are born in the image of likeness of Adam. And because of this, in most of our lives, we live out of control. Amen. In a world that is out of control, telling us how to get back into control. Now, ain't, that a, ain't that a scenario right there? We are living in a world that is out of control, and we are out of control, but the world is telling us how to get back in control when it can't get out of its own situation that it is in. Mm -hmm. See, the thing is, we got to have a what? A concrete plan mm -hmm. to be able to get back in order. So how do we do that? But aren't you glad God got a plan, huh? Yeah. huh? Because of our weakness, God had a plan to bring us back again in order so that we can live under control to have the blessings that he has in store for us. Isn't, that's why Jesus came. He came and he died, rose again on the third day morning, ascending into heaven, sitting on the right hand of God, taking petitions for our prayers right now. In our text, of Paul is saying in the letter in Corinthian church, which was a church out of order, out of control, to get them realigned to the plan that God has for their life. I like that commercial about this old lady who posted, she told her, post all of your pictures on the wall. And she didn't know nothing about computers, so she took all of her pictures out of her scrapbook and posted them all on the wall, had pins all over the wall. And her, her, her daughter came in, she said, Mama, that ain't had work. See, you, you're supposed to be posting your pictures on the computer wall, not the wall in your house. See, many of us, we need to, that's not how it works. You need to tell some folk in church, that's not how it works. And they were living out of control in our text. Paul says that, and to the weak I became as weak, that I might gain the weak. I made all things to all men, that I might uh, by all means save some. And this I do 
For the gospel's sake, that I might be a partaker of them, uh, thereof with them. So Paul is trying to find some commonality of ground with the people that he's dealing with. So these things were falling apart all around them. And Paul was trying to find a way to reach the people to get them out of that situation they were in. They'd been in that situation so long till they hadn't gotten used to it. Think about it. Anybody with me this morning, you can get caught up into something so long until you get used to it. We talked about it in class last night. The best way to reach people uh, that are lost and delinquent in some way is to identify with them. See, we got folk that been in church so long that they're so holier than thou. They ain't never sinned. They ain't never did nothing. They ain't never talked back. They, ain't no, they haven't done anything. But what Paul was trying to get them to understand is that I can I, I can understand what you're going through. You know, I, I, I can come and, and, uh, and deal with those situations that you deal with because I dealt with those situations myself. You got to relate to people somehow and identify with them. So if we are going to identify with their temptation, even their sin, we need to let them know that the God that can transform their life was the one that transformed our life. Yeah. Paul said that the same issues that you are going through, that was the same issue that God had to come and work with in my own life. You know, Paul was a persecutor of the church. Paul was one that God had to knock down off of his horse and to change his heart and mind to get him to follow him. See, if we are to be able to transform their life, we have to begin to identify with them. Paul identified with them, and Paul had to reach way down to be able to pick some of them up. And this is what we and I have to do. Don't be ashamed of where God brought you from. Don't be ashamed of your testimony. It may be somebody out there, a sinner, that, that's going through the same thing that you went through, that he can be able to take your testimony and help him get out of his situation. Paul showed his weakness to reach the weak. Think about it. He allowed people to see his faults in a way able to reach out to them to let them know that they were able to come out of their situation. Claiming to be holier than thou uh, when you're human isn't fooling anybody. Mm -hmm. <laughs> Not even yourself. Mm -hmm. you, you, you try to fool yourself and think you all of that, but you know who you are. Don't, you're not fooling anybody. Share your brokenness. Share your, your, your situations that you're dealing with. To help others to be able to come out of their situation. Help to be able to share some hope into their lives. Because they can know if God can bring you out. But he can bring them out too. For the sake of the gospel. That Christ too can cause a, a, a raising up into your life. You, God will not leave you down if you would only ask him to be able to pick you up. Yeah. You can only do this by what? By submitting yourself to God. Mm -hmm. See, control is submission. We, we don't think com control is submission. We think when we submit, we're giving in. That the people are controlling us. No, when you submit to Christ, that you're giving yourself to him, and then what you're doing is you're living now under his control rather than having your flesh, your spirit, controlling you. See, that your spirit shouldn't be controlling you. You should be controlled by a holier spirit than your spirit because you know your spirit can turn at any time, ain't it? So next Paul tells us that there is a reward for living under control. Our text says what? Know you not that they which run in a race run all, but one what? Receiveth the prize. So run that ye may what? Obtain, and every man that strives for mastery is temperate in all things. Now they do it to obtain a corruptible crown, but we what? An incorruptible. See, we talked about fallout due to the environment. Uh, that is around us and living under control has much to do with the same. Uh, to be good at anything requires talent, but it requires you to invest some time to train, ain't it? Mm -hmm. Talent alone can't give you the promise of a victory. Mm -hmm. And to win requires you to train yourself and to be around the right people, ain't it? And that's why athletes always train what? Together with other people. Be 
being around positive people will provide you with more opportunities for positive results. Being around negative people will provide you for more opportunity for what? Negative results. To win in any race requires us to run under control. Amen. Mind, body, and Amen. soul, and arms, and legs, and lips, and tongue, and feet, and eyes. Everything in your being need to be what? Working in control to be able to run under control so that you can get your best time or your fastest or your best effort. See, a runner that's all over the place is running like a chicken what? With his head cut off. See, train so that you can be disciplined and running under water so you can run, that run toward that high call, the prize of the high calling of Jesus Christ. That's what Paul said. He said, I press toward the high calling of Jesus Christ. And he said that that's what we need to do. A mature Christian must think this way. We must train in a way and we must run in a way to live under control while running this Christian race. And what, not only should we run, we should run with endurance. See, you can't run and win this race overnight. You need to run with endurance. So endurance and control uh, goes hand in hand. To live under control, you got to endure the wiles of the devil. Ain't that what Paul told us in Ephesians 6? See, the race... Uh, that we call life is not a quick race, ain't it? It's an endurance race. And Jesus said, but he that endured to the end, what? Shall be saved. See, the reward doesn't come until the end. Ain't that right? It doesn't, so we must, what? Finish this race. Yes. The reward doesn't come until the end. So God expects us in order to get the victory, we need to finish the race. Right. Trophies rust away. All of our, our accolades and our awards will one day rust away. And you'll never see the reward of your victory in this world. That's why he says that the rewards of this world are corruptible. They will never last. You can work hard to get the, uh, 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 the rewards of this world, but the rewards of this world will only lead to rust and failure. They, they'll never last the, the test of terror. Mm -hmm. and, 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 and we got to understand this. So the, the reward don't come until we finish the race. Amen. But the thing is, the prize that we have, that we are running for to win, is an incorruptible crown, ain't it? Yeah. So I, I, my wife and I, we were cleaning up because of our son coming to visit us. And, 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 and I looked up there and she had taken down all of my trophies that I had, that I was just telling you about my karate trophies, I had all of my karate trophies up on top of a, a, a cabinet upstairs and, 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 and two or three of my karate trophies, they got broke. She brought them downstairs in a box. I had the, 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 the plaque in one corner, the, 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 uh, the, the marble was in another corner, the little piece of brass statue was in another corner. So what, I, what I, I learned from that is what? Trophies will what? Rust and they'll yeah. fall apart, they'll break, and they'll fail. Mm -hmm. See, but the thing is about it is, no matter how hard you work to win those things of the world, those things of the world will one day break and rust away. Yeah. So what God is telling us, we need to be able to try to win the incorruptible crown that he has in store for us. When we strive to live for Christ, under his control, we will receive a everlasting reward that Amen. will not rust. Fill and gold have I not, but such that I have I give unto thee. Mm. He told them, one man, to take up your bed and walk. We don't have silver and gold, but we have what lasts. God will give us what will last. Mm. Then finally, the question is, how do we live under control? Mm -hmm. Paul tells us in our prayer. I therefore run, not as in certainly. So fight I not as one that beateth the air, but I keep my body under and bring it unto subjection. Unless by any means, when I have preached to others, I myself should be a castaway. See, confidence is what? 
is necessary trait for a winner. You cannot be a winner unless you have the confidence, you know, to believe that you are a winner. Amen. But if you run and fight with uncertainty, that it will never get you the victory. you got to run with your confidence knowing that you have the talent, the skill, the effort, put forth the training to be able to accomplish and to win doing what you are good at. Amen. But if you run with that uncertainty, Amen. you most likely will not win. Peter Amen. was in jail. He was chained and locked up. And he still lived assured that God will somehow provide him an escape. Luke writes in Acts 2 and 11, when Peter came to himself, he says that not, oh, I, now I know of a surety that the Lord sent an angel had delivered me from the hand Amen. of Herod for all expectation of the people in the Jews. See, God sent an angel. He shook the chains off of Peter, blinded the eyes of the jailer, and when a Peter came to his death, he was already out of the jail. See, yeah. see, what you don't realize is that when things look hopeless, you, you still can live under control. Amen. You don't know when God is doing to set you free. Mm -hmm. You think you're locked up and ain't got no chance to get away, but God is still working this thing out. Yeah. Peter was certain that God will come to his rescue. Mm -hmm. So how do we live under control? We must what? Believe that the power of the Holy Spirit is working to do what God will do in our life. Yeah. We got to put everything under subjection unto God. Mm -hmm. Don't let your body rule the spirit. But to let the spirit rule the body. Do I need to say that again? Yeah. Don't let your spirit rule your body. Mm. But don't let your body rule your spirit. Let your spirit rule your body. Paul says mm. in Romans 7, For I know that the law is spiritual, but I am carnal, soul under sin. Paul is saying that the things that I want to do, I can't do. Mm. The things that I think is right to do somehow don't make sense to me. He says that, but it ain't me. It's the sin that is down in me that's dwelling in me that's no good thing. He said, when I try to do good, evil is ever present. Amen. For the good that I would do, that I would not do. But now if I do that I would, it is not no more that I do it. But it's that, what? It's that sin or evil that is dwelling in me. Amen. See, the sin nature, that's the problem that is in dwelling in each one of us will not allow us to live under control. The sin nature want to be out of control. It fights against the will of God every day in your life. The will of God wants to be under control, but the flesh wants you to be out of control and it strives each and every day to get you to be obedient to it. And if you don't believe that, we always said that the flesh is weak. Hmm. No, the flesh, it, it's weak, but it's not weak when it faces you. Your flesh will give you a run for your money every day of your life. And 90% of the time, who wins? The flesh, ain't it? The flesh will win. So the Holy yes. Spirit is the only thing that can bring our spirit under subjection to the will of God. You cannot allow your spirit to rule you because your spirit is operated by the flesh. And until you subject your spirit under the subjection of the Holy Spirit, you will never be able to live a life mm -hmm. under control. Mm -hmm. So the only way for living under control is to be able to submit your life to the Holy Spirit. Mm -hmm. Allow that Holy Spirit to derive you, to, to, to direct you each and every day of your life. So as we close this morning, the capacity for personally for each one of us to sin is beyond anything else that you would ever think or imagine. Hey, look, if you don't think that capacity is sin in you, only thing you need to do is just take your eyes off of Christ just for a second. Hey. Now, these are the three words that a lot of times we say, I told you earlier, if I would, I could, I should, but I'm adding another. I might. <laughs> huh? I, 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 can you imagine what you would have said or done uh, what was on your mind if it had not been for the Lord on your side? Huh? Can you imagine what you would have said or done? 
what was on your mind if it had not been for the Lord? Huh? Can you imagine what you uh, could have done mm -hmm. if it had not been for the Lord? Huh? <laughs> Can you imagine what you might have done? Because huh? some things that you would do, you couldn't do. And some things that you couldn't do huh, that you might have done, but if you would have done. So you can't do a whole lot of stuff because you can't do it no more. So you would have done it if you could have done it. But you couldn't have done it. No. Because... So that's where we're at now. We are at a place in life now that our body can't do a whole lot. And now we think that, oh, now we, no, you ain't all of that. That your body can't do what it used to do. So no. your body has slowed down. So now you think that you're strong enough. The weakness is still there. You're still weak. But you still need the Spirit of God in you strong. Hey. So can you imagine what yes. our capacity to live in sin is beyond anything that we could ever think. And that's why it's important to live what? Under control of the Holy Spirit. If you're not living under the control of the Holy Spirit, you might say anything. You could do anything. And you can convince yourself you should do it. But if you live under the control of the Holy Spirit, the Holy Spirit will unction you, will tap you on the shoulder and remind you what is right in the sight of the Lord, if you've got his word in your heart. Mm -hmm. I like what old Helen Baylor said, if it had not been for the Lord on my side, where would yeah, I be? I thought about those words to them. And then I know, I don't know about you this morning, I know where I'd be. If the Lord was not on my side, I don't have a, a inkling or a clue. Uh, 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 I know where I'd be. Huh? I know where I was. So if I stayed in the same place, I would not be where God want me to be. So Amen. I know where I'd be if it was not for the Lord on my side. Amen. See, we, we saw Charlie Wilson a few years ago at the Jazz Festival. And he was, he was, I think he's again at the Jazz Festival this year. And uh, he said that He's been up, he's been down, he's been down, he's been up, he's been up and out. He's been from rags to riches and then from riches back to rags. He's been to hell and back. And, and, and now he said, I'm, I've been with the Lord. See, and no matter what you've been through, if you get to the Lord, huh, he, he'll make everything all right. Huh, do y'all hear me this morning? I thank God that one day he looked beyond all of my fault. He looked beyond this old wretched soul of mine. And he was able to pick me up and call me from sin into repentance. Mm. And he took me an out of control mm. sinner like me. Mm. And he cleaned me up and he stood me and set me on a solid rock. And I'm here today to tell you, yes, I'm not perfect. Mm. But one thing about it, I'm a God. I'm a man that God has come into his life that was out of control and he's turned my life around again. Huh, don't we serve a good God, huh? Yeah. I encourage you this morning yeah. to be able to give yeah. your life over to God. Yeah. If your life is spinning in a circle and yeah. you're in a spiral and yeah. a downward turn and you don't know yeah. how to get up, you don't know what to look and know what to do. And no, but the thing about it, if you're going everywhere, but damn, you need to call upon God. Jesus. Call upon the name of Jesus. He is the power that you need. Mm -hmm. He is the joy that you need. He is the love that you need. Amen. Did you know this morning there is power in the name of Jesus? Huh? There is love in the name yes. of Jesus. Amen. There is help in the name of Jesus. There is deliverance in the name of Jesus. There is salvation in the name of Jesus. Everything that we have and everything we need is in the name of Jesus. All the thing you need to do this morning is call upon him. My dad, call upon him this morning. He's faithful if you would only call upon him. He is the one that will get you out of your control and into his control. He'll put you out of your control and under his control where your life will never be the same again. 
God is able to turn things around. In order for you to live a life under control, you need Jesus this morning. Accept Jesus Christ. He's the one that can take your out of control life and put it back together again. Aren't you glad about it this morning? God is able to take that was torn down and put it back together again. If your life is out of control, call upon the name of Jesus. He is there for you. He'll be there. He'll do it if you'd only call upon him. So we encourage you this morning. Call upon the name of Jesus. If your life seems to be out of control and you want it to get back in control again, call upon the one that can do it. He is the one that can set you free. He is the one that can redeem you and bring you back in full fellowship with the Father if you would only call upon him. So I encourage you this morning. Call upon Jesus. And he'll make everything all right. Am I right about it? He'll make everything all right if you call upon him. So we want to encourage you this morning. Call upon Jesus. Call upon him. He'll be there. He'll answer in your time of need. He'll, he'll be there for you if you would only put your trust in him. God bless you. If there is one this morning whose life is out of control and if you want to get your life back in control again, he says in his word, all you need to do is confess with your mouth then believe in your mouth, heart that Jesus Christ is Lord. The Bible tells me that thou shall be saved. Receive him today. Receive salvation offered through Jesus Christ. And then that out of control life can get back in control again. And he can put it back together again. Can he do it? Yes, God yes. bless you. May heaven never smile upon you. Let us bow. Father God, we do thank you, Lord, for this day. We thank you for this opportunity to come. And hopefully we've said some encouraging word to get some believers to know that even though they're going through, that God is able to bring things back in order again. Just call upon him and everything will be all right. God bless you. May heaven never smile upon you. And hopefully we pray for the sick to shut in and breathe. We pray for those that are going through. Pray especially for the man who has not accepted Jesus Christ. Man, woman, boy, girl that has not accepted Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior. We ask you today to touch his heart. Touch the sinner man that don't know you. Touch his heart that he might turn his life around to receive you. Lord, we thank you and praise you. This is our prayer this morning in Christ Jesus' name. May the grace of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ, rest, rule, and abide with us henceforth and forever. And let the household of faith say, Amen.